Krista? Jimmy Johnson right now complaining that he needed to go back and caution out debris. It's actually right in front of Kyle Busch's pit stall. Oh, that's the debris? No. There's other stuff out there. Bit of cabling up there as well as uh, a few items that might have come out of the grandstand. There's that cable you see in the shot. Whoa. And that was definitely in the way of oncoming traffic. So we're under yellow for the third time. Kyle Busch leading Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth. The 825 sunset. And there is uh, Kyle Busch, some damage to the cars because a cable was on the track. That's why we are now under a red flag right at 126 laps. That's 189 miles. Yeah, and that's serious damage. We're talking about speeds at 200 miles an hour. You need your arrow to be intact, to be fast here. That team can probably repair that, Chris, but it's going to set them back. We've had six leaders. Eight different lead changes. We had record speeds in qualifying for this race, and we were moving at a track record pace for the Coca-Cola 600, but that has all changed now. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson, we talked about him getting his car better and better. Everybody ran their fastest lap of this race in, in the first four or five laps when we started. The track is cooling down, so adjustments will be made, and guys will get their cars faster and faster. Jimmy Johnson has already made that step. He had his fastest lap some 78 laps into the event. So that just goes to show things are changing. Conditions will differ, but that's some serious damage to the side of that 18 car. We also saw the 9 of Marcus Ambrose on pit road dealing with some damage from this. You can't figure out what all is going through that young man's mind right now <laughs> trying to win here in Charlotte. And he has won twice this year. Yeah, but not here at this racetrack, and that's something that I know he really wants. He won the truck race here last week. He obviously won. He also won the nationwide race yesterday. So fast guy here, and if a cable tears your car up, you're probably a little bit confused about what you're going to do about that. They're talking with NASCAR, working with NASCAR to see how they can work on that car. Maybe uh, under red flag conditions, you're not allowed to work on your car, but since things are so unique here, maybe they will be able to. And, and we have confirmed the uh, the stoppage here, the red flag is from the Fox Sports camera, our overhead camera, uh, the cable snapped and uh, don't know the exact reason why, obviously, but it came down onto the track, caused some of the delay, some of the damage, some of the drivers uh, reacting. And obviously, it's a camera that is above, that NASCAR works with us on to give you great views uh, of the race, of the action, uh, but because of a malfunction, it has caused a problem and no doubt uh, hoping for an update on Twitter. Yeah, and there's Kyle Busch. He's going out to take a picture with his Sprint phone of the side of his car so he can share that with his team so they can come up with a game plan about how they will try to repair that car. So the teams aren't allowed to work on the car at this point. Kyle's getting them as good of a look at what's gone on on the right side so the team can be react to this and fix the car. Now, wasn't there a rule in NASCAR going back to when Brad Kozlowski had that tweet heard around the world? from the Daytona 500 about limitations uh, with cell phone use, but taking pictures may be different. Here is the, the camera we're talking about, our Fox camera that we, uh, we bring to uh, big events whenever we can to give you all angles, an overhead view that has certain cables that go in different directions. Our director, Artie Kempner, uh, producer Barry Landis, uh, try and move that around to make sure uh, we get the best action. So a part of that cable from what we have confirmed here now uh, did snap and was, came down onto the track some of the cars ran over it as we've been discussing mike and breaking down as best we can and understanding the effect that it's had and thus the caution flag first to understand exactly what happened and then the uh, the red flag where we stand right now interestingly enough at the same time the camera had an incident i saw a bottle hit the or a coke bottle maybe hit the front of one of the race cars jamie mcmurray i believe and that was a tremendous explosion on his car so a lot of things went down all at once. A lot of damage on your leader at the moment, Cowboys. Didn't Jeff Gordon too tweet about the water, uh, at least, or some effect? Uh, you were talking about the water bottle, the yeah. after effect. I heard uh, on radio traffic, G Gordon's crew saying that he got sprayed by that water or, or cola that, that's, that <laughs> Jamie McMurray hit. So uh, a lot of things happening all at once here. In Live at the Coca-Cola 600, where a fiber rope from a camera has caused a delay from the red flag, now the yellow flag, NASCAR allowing drivers' cars to go into the pit stalls for 15 minutes. Each car can be repaired, worked on, then the field likely to be frozen where it was at the caution. Yeah, and I think that's a fair thing to do. We saw the nine car of Marcus Ambrose making repairs. Kyle obviously has a lot of work they need to do to that right side, but Chris, I don't think the nose itself is damaged bad enough that this team can't repair this car. He's going to get his position back as will all the other competitors. I think this team can make repairs to this race car and that 
Kyle Busch kid will still have a chance to win this race. Yeah, Chris, a lot of people were saying and thinking this was a cable. This is the rope, actually some pieces of the rope that came out from underneath the uh, the nine car right there, and that's what, what really did the damage. It got wound around the rear end housing and tore the brake line loose. They had to effect repairs, and fortunately, I think they're going to be able to get that car ready to go. You can see right over our shoulder, the nine car's already in his pit, so he's waiting for everybody else to get in there so they can go to work on it. Steve, what you got, bud? Well, Jeff, uh, just some more information on that nine car. In addition to that brake line being repaired, they had a piece of that cable stuck in the grill, which they removed. They also had a piece of the uh, roof line that was damaged. They were able to repair that as well. And also hearing that NASCAR will give them their position back when this uh, caution came out. Chris Devota. Work going on here in the 18 pit, a laundry list of problems for Kyle Busch. He said the right front fender is soft, the rocker is weak. He said the crush panel is damaged and the nose is split. Kyle Busch was your leader when this occurred. He said right now his car is killed. His crew chief Dave Rogers said, we are going to fix this and we're going to show him what we're made of. Steve. Chris Casey got out of his car and walked over to the right front corner of his machine and, and Kenny Francis and, and pretty much the entire five crew, they had the car jacked up looking at the splitter on that right front and also looking inside the right front wheel well, just surveying if there's any kind of damage whatsoever at this juncture. It looks like they've gotten away pretty good unscathed so far on the five. Now here it is overhanging the track at turn four. The first car coming is going to be Kyle Busch. That's going to catch in his right front wheel well, and it's just going to whipsaw the fender behind the wheel, uh, the wheel well. Now, where is it going to go? Watch Mark Martin right here. He's going to come along, pick up that cable. It's going to do a little damage to the left rear uh, of his car. There it is in the air. It's going to catch on Mark's car, and then it's going to go underneath Marcus Ambrose car. You see the camera getting kicked, uh, the cable getting kicked up into the air, off to the side, and it's going to hook underneath Ambrose car where it severs a brake line. There it is again, moving between Martin's car and the yellow and black number nine of Ambrose. <laughs> So it stays with Ambrose. It's wrapped around his rear axle. He's trailing it here in front of Montoya. And eventually will make his way to pit road with much of that rope still attached. Mike, we had talked about earlier in the race about the unexpected. Uh, thinking back again to A.J. Allmendinger at Indy when his seatbelt came undone. How do you prepare for that? Today, uh, Trevor Bain had paper get on his grill. Those are just things that, uh, that are unexpected, but um, this is quite unique here. There's that other piece of cable uh, that Brad is going to hit. And so is Danica. Yes, yeah, several drivers are going to run over that, but it appeared no damage. But I just want to commend NASCAR for doing what they've done here, for letting these drivers bring their cars to pit road, make the repairs on Marcus Ambrose's car, Kyle Busch's car. And so many cars ran over so many things they, they can work on their cars. They can change tires. I, I know it's it's out of the ordinary, but I truly commend NASCAR for what they've done here. And the most important thing here, Larry, is not only can they make the repairs, but NASCAR will then line the cars back up in the order that they were running when the incident occurred. So neither Ambrose nor Kyle Busch, nobody will be penalized for having to make these repairs. Well, right now, the issue for the 18 team is not whether they can repair the damage. It's whether they can do it in the necessary time frame. They know they're under the gun. They're on a NASCAR clock, so they're keeping track of it. You see Dave Rogers just to the left of your screen, just going out of frame. The crew chief, he is over the wall with the helmet on, overseeing the repairs his crew is making. This is one of the best pit crews in the business, but they're used to just doing 12, 13-second stops, not having to go over the wall and fix a car mid-race when you have a laundry list of problems on the right front. Kyle Busch also out of the the car looking at everything as well as he comes around there it is there, you yeah, can you see, see that right buckle there right in yeah. there yeah boy look what it seems so minor but look at the damage it did and of course the right side of these cars is so critical for side force and you start messing up the right side of these cars and, and you can't drive them so let's say that rope is a half an inch around well at 185 miles an hour it cuts a wide swath through that fender. Like a very big knife. Yes. 
still in conversation and a snack. Everybody's eating. Everybody's grabbing a little snack. I have the Coca-Cola 600 where the engines have been refired, and there's Marcus Ambrose in the nine car. He's making up his laps. He went down. The NASCAR <laughs> said they would freeze the field at the moment of caution. He lost a couple of laps while the uh, caution was out. Now he's making those up to get his spot back. When the caution came out, we talked about uh, Kyle Busch, who has led 18 laps and running over the cable. We certainly apologize for that camera fiber causing a problem, but they went to work right away. <laughs> well, I knew those guys would get that thing prepared. All the teams bring fabricators, Chris. They come in case there's some sort of damage they have to go behind the wall and fix. You throw them a project like this, and they get happy about it. They say, we'll fix this darn car. The crew is up to anything and excited about their work so far, and they have a long night and a great job early. Let it go, they're pulling it. 